Today we're going to take a look at potential dividers. You'll recall that voltages divide in series. But exactly how do they divide in series? So let's suppose we've got two resistors joined in series, R1 and R2. And let's connect, say, a battery across those two resistors. And there's two things we know. One thing we know is the current has to be the same through both resistors. And using Ohm's law, current equals voltage over resistance. So the current through R1 has to be V1 all over R1, where V1 is the voltage across R1. And that has to equal V2 all over R2, where V2 is the voltage across R2. The other thing we know by Kirchhoff's loop rule is that if the battery voltage here is V, then V has to equal V1 plus V2. So now what you can do is a little bit of algebra, and I'll leave it as an algebraic exercise. It's not very difficult, but you can show that the voltage V1 across R1 will be equal to a certain fraction of the battery voltage. And that fraction, of course, is going to depend on the values of the resistors. So the fraction is going to be R1 divided by R1 plus R2. The ratio of that resistance compared to the sum of the two resistors. And similarly, V2 is going to equal a certain fraction of the battery voltage. It's going to equal R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So maybe let's just put a few numbers into that. Let's say our battery voltage is 12 volts. And let's make our first resistor R1 be equal to 10 ohms. And our second resistor R2 will make it equal to 20 ohms. Then V1 across the 10 ohm resistors would be 10 out of 10 plus 20, or 1 third of the battery voltage. So the voltage across V1 would be 4 volts. Now the voltage across the 20 ohm resistors is going to have to be 8 volts, so that 8 plus 4 adds up to 12. But using our formula, we'd say V2 is equal to a certain fraction of 12 volts, and that fraction will be 20 out of 30. So let's see if you remember that equation. Answer this IB multiple choice question. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So the voltage across R1 is just going to be R1 over the total resistance times the battery voltage. Another IB multiple choice. This time you're going to apply the formula. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. OK, let's try putting in values at the extremes, 0 and 3,000, in here for our variable resistor. So if I were to put in a 0 ohm resistor, then V here would be equal to this resistance, which is 3,000, divided by the total resistance, 3,000 plus 3,000. And you'd multiply that by the battery voltage here, the potential difference of 9 volts, and you'd get 4.5 volts. Now let's crank up the resistance to 3,000, so we'll make this a 3,000 now. So now my fraction will be 3,000 plus 3,000. We'd have 6,000 here. But now our total resistance is 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9,000 and we'd multiply that by the battery voltage to 9 volts, and we'd get 6 volts. So V ranges between 4.5 and 6 volts. The correct answer is C. You've probably seen things around the labs that look like these two devices below. These are examples of potentiometers. The first one here is called a rheostat. And the second one here is usually just called a pot. But they both work the same way. So let me explain that with the rheostat. This green material here, it would be a resistive material. And what you do is you connect a battery 
across the ends of that resistive material. And this connect connector here is connected to what's called the slider. The slider is just a point of contact with the resistive material. Let me call it a slider because we can move the slider back and forth, of course. And when we move that slider back and forth, the output voltage will change. It'll vary anywhere from zero volts to the voltage of the battery here. And the pots work the same way. We connect a voltage across the two ends here, and this middle one would be our slider, or output voltage. So these are used in dimmer switches, and volume controls. We can essentially use them anywhere where we're cranking up some quantity in a continuous manner. So we'd turn the knob clockwise and our light would get brighter. So let's see how we'd typically put a potentiometer into a circuit. And we'd call this here a potential divider circuit. And the reason we'd want a potential divider circuit is maybe we'd like to dim our light bulb here. So we'd like to be able to move the slider back and forth so our light bulb would get brighter dim. Or perhaps our light bulb to function properly is supposed to run at 4 volts. But all we've got available is two 3 volt batteries. So we could connect those in series and get 6 volts. And we would find if we put our slider way down here, we'd get 0 volts. And if we slid it all the way up here to the top, we'd get the full 6 volts. And if we slid it down a bit, somewhere in here, we'd get 4 volts. And that's where our light bulb would function correctly. So the big thing about a potential divider circuit is it allows us to continuously vary an output voltage from 0 volts to the battery voltage. So let's draw the circuit diagram for our potential divider circuit here. We've got our two cell battery and that's connected to the rheostat and the rheostat is just a resistor so there's our symbol for a resistor and then for our slider what we do is we draw an arrow so this here would be our slider and you can see here that the light bulb is connected to the slider on one side and to ground on the other side so this circuit has the light bulb connected from the slider to the ground. In this particular case we've got also got a voltmeter which is going across the light bulb. So this here is really our symbol for a potentiometer. And that's in your data booklet. When you're thinking about how a potentiometer works, you kind of want to think about this circuit though. Well we still got our battery but we've got a certain amount of resistance that's above the slider and we've got a certain amount of resistance that's below the slider. And then we've got our load resistor connected in parallel to that resistance that's below the slider. So essentially we've got a compound circuit, one that we've already studied many times with a single resistor in the series with two resistors in parallel. So here's a little IB question that I think is going to help remind us how to analyze compound circuits like the potential divider circuit. So before the filament breaks, our circuit is essentially a battery. Let's give the battery a, a certain voltage. Let's say it's 12 volts, just to make up a number. And then we've got this resistor Z, and then equal resistances Y and X. So all of our resistors are the same value. These two resistors in parallel, well they're equal paths, so the equivalent resistance here we could replace those two by a resistor R over 2. 
So that would mean we'd have a resistance R in series with a resistance R over 2. So of course R here is two-thirds as big as the total resistance. So, so the voltage across R here, across Z, should be two-thirds of 12. We'd get 8 volts across this first resistor. And the remaining voltage across the other two resistors would be 4 volts. Now if filament X here breaks, then our circuit is going to simplify. We're just going to have a resistor R here at the top, followed by another resistor R right below it. So we have two equal resistors here. The voltage, the 12 volts, is going to split up equally. So we'll get 6 volts across the first resistor and another 6 volts across the second resistor. So across lamp Y, the voltage went from 4 volts to 6 volts. It increased. So it's got to be that answer or that answer. When the voltage increases, the brightness has to increase. For lamp Z here at the top, it went from 8 volts but went down to 6 volts, so it's going to become less bright. So the correct answer is C. So here we've got a problem involving a rheostat, a potential divider circuit. What I'd like you to do is read over the problem, try it out for yourself, see how far you can get, and then come back for the answer. So let's start by figuring out how much resistance we're going to get below the slider of our rheostat. We know our rheostat has a length of 20 centimeters, and the resistance will be proportional to the length. So if we're connecting in here at 4 centimeters, then the voltage across this lower portion of the rheostat is going to be 4 out of 20 times the total resistance, that 10 ohms, to give you a value of 2 ohms. So below the slider, we'll have a resistance of 2 ohms. Above the slider, we'd have a resistance of 8 ohms. So we might draw our circuit like this. We've got our battery, which is 12 volts, connected to the rheostat. But we can think of the rheostat as being two resistors, one below the slider, one above the slider. This one would be 2 ohms, this one would be 8 ohms. And we're connecting across that lower resistor our load, which happens to be 2,000 ohms. So what we need to do now is find out the equivalent resistance of those two in parallel. And if we take a 2 in parallel with a 2,000, that's going to be approximately 2 ohms because 2 ohms is a lot less than 2,000 ohms. That means pretty much all the current will go through this smaller resistor. So that means that the voltage across the load is going to be 2, the resistance of those two in parallel, divided by the total resistance here, the 10 ohms, times the voltage of the battery which gives us 2.4 volts. And what's kind of neat here is that whenever you've got a rheostat with a small resistance compared to the load, then the voltage across the load is just going to be proportional to the length along here. It's a little more complicated if the rheostat resistance is comparable to the load resistance. So why do we like these potential divider circuits so much? Well, one, you get a continuous range of output voltages or load voltages from zero volts all the way to the voltage of the battery. So it's a better circuit than say taking your battery and then connecting it with a resistor and a variable resistor and then putting your load resistor across the variable resistor. And the reason for that is that sure here you can get zero volts across it by making this resistance zero, but you can never get the 
full voltage of the battery across here because some of the voltage will always be on this top resistor. And the other thing that's really nice is that so long as the resistance of the rheostat or potentiometer is much less than the resistance of the load, then the voltage across the load will be proportional to the length along the rheostat. So that makes it very easy to estimate where you've got to put your slider in order to get the voltage that you want. Okay, let's summarize the big ideas from the video. Big idea number one was that if we have a circuit like this, a battery across two resistors, R1 and R2 in series, and we call the voltage across R1, V1 and the voltage across R2, V2, then V1 is going to be given by R1 all over the sum of the resistances times the battery voltage and V2 would be given by R2 over that same sum times the battery voltage. Big idea number two would be the circuit symbol for a potentiometer or equally a rheostat. They're really the same thing and they're just given by a box representing a resistor and then an arrow representing a slider. And big idea number three was the full potential divider circuit, which was simply a battery con connected to a potentiometer and then the slider would be connected across the load resistor. And we saw that when we were thinking of analyzing that circuit, we want to think of it as this battery being connected across two resistors, one below the slider and one above the slider. And then we put our load resistor across that bottom resistance. So let's call this resistance above the slider, we'll call that RA. The resistance below the slider, we'll call that RB. Then the voltage across the load here would in general be given by the equivalent resistance of R below in parallel with R load divided by RA plus that parallel combination of RB in parallel with the load resistance. And then of course we'd multiply that by the battery voltage. And we can simplify that expression if this total resistance here, the total resistance of the rheostat is much less than the load resistor. Because then we can simply write that the voltage across the load is going to be equal to the resistance below the slider divided by that total resistance times the voltage of the battery. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.